Okay, um, they start right out the gate with a bit of a mean question, <laughs> a bit of a, a bit of a curveball. So we're looking at question one, and uh, this is, as you can see by the topic heading, this is sequence as a series. So one B. Now, admittedly, it's it's phrased in a bit of an unusual way. Find the values of a and b, um, such that you form an arithmetic progression um, out of those. Okay, Any, anywhere's fine. It's okay. Um, now you can see the way that I've laid this out. If you know, if you've been told that you have an arithmetic progression out of the gate, right? Then what is it that makes an arithmetic progression an arithmetic progression? There's a, well you're either adding or subtracting something each time. Uh, a better way, a more technical way to say that is you have a common difference every time. And the way you can get the common difference is comparing one term to the previous one and one term to the previous one, or to the next, whichever direction is fine. Okay? So you can see therefore why I do this, that's subtracting term 4, sorry, subtracting term 3 from term 4. If it really is an AP like they're saying, then that should be the same as term 3 take away term 2. You see what I've done there? And then really there's just a bit of, it's just rearrangement, a tiny bit of log laws, but not very much. Okay, so can you see how I've laid it out? Um, I was just trying to find B because it's in that equation and it's, it's closest to the amount of information that I know. I know some of you might have gotten spun out by having that base of Z there. What on earth is that about? The extension 2 kids momentarily panicked because they're like, wait, is that what it means? No, it doesn't mean what you think it means. It's just a number and you don't even know it, need to know what the number is. It's all in terms of Z. Okay. Once you see, by the way, here's the first term, or rather, here's the first term, here's the second term, you can see what's happening to what's going on in here, right? You've got three quarters, three on two, and then three, and then six. So as the term inside the log doubles, the distances between the whole terms are just constant. That's what an arithmetic progression is. Yeah? Are you happy with that? Cool. That was about an AP, so here's a GP. Now, in order to do this well, again, it was slightly curveball-ish. What you really needed to be able to demonstrate was, well, do you know how to get the sum of a GP? Do you remember? We derived this formula. We got it from scratch. But this has been phrased to you. It's been posed to you in a bit of an unusual way. Um, a plus B plus Z. Does that mean that there are 26 terms? No. And the clue is there's no 26 anywhere in the answer, the result you're trying to prove. You need to be able to show, okay, I know how to get from a whole series, and what did I do to that in order to get the sum of that series? Um, phrased in more specific or familiar terms, when you've got the sum of the first n terms, right? We will usually say the first term is a, that's fine, but we wouldn't normally call the next term b. What would we call it? For a general GP. It'd be the first term multiplied by a common ratio, right? And you'd then do it again. And then you do it as many times as you needed to until you got to the nth term. What is the nth term? It's a and how many lots of the common ratio? n minus 1. Okay, now this, hopefully, when you see it in this form, it sort of triggers for you, oh, I remember now, the way that we sort of collapse this indeterminate number of terms into something manageable was we multiplied by that common ratio. Do you remember that? Does it ring a bell? Okay, so when you do that, you can see, oh yeah, that's right, it creates this parallel here, and this parallel here, and all the intervening terms, except that the last term isn't a r to the n minus 1 anymore, is it? What is the last term? Index laws, a r to the n, because you multiplied everything by r, didn't you? Okay, which is why when you subtract one of these lines from the other, all of the things cancel except for except for um, this guy down the end and this guy at the beginning. Do you remember that? Okay. So what I have done is that exact same strategy except in this weird looking strangely dressed up formula. Okay. So what I've done is I've multiplied by this guy. Where did that come from? What is that? That's the common ratio. I know it's not posed in a form that you're familiar with, but that's kind of the point of this question, right? You can still work out the common ratio, bless you, just like we worked out the common difference in the previous part, okay? So I multiplied through by that, and then in the next line, I've done exactly what we did with the normal proof. I subtracted one whole series from the other. Um, and how come I'm left with just two terms here? Do you remember why I'm just left with two terms? What happened to all the rest of them? Yeah, the same thing that happened on this side, all the intermediary terms 
disappeared, okay? From there, it's just a bit of algebraic dancing around, okay? I just need to make S the subject, because that, that is the question after all. Show that its sum is, and then there you are. Does that make sense? So I know it's weird. Um, that's kind of the point. Like, look at, now that you see the answer, who, who got it out first hit? Anyone? Yeah, a couple of hands up, all right? So most of you, now that you're looking at it, you're like, oh, OK. I, I've done this before. I've, this is familiar, right? But it's just in a, an unrehearsed context. And that's what makes it a bit more challenging, OK?